Friends, this week's Saturday Wisdom will be on skills. Let us explore how the skills paradigm has unfolded in the past decade. What are the positives accrued and what areas need a course correction? Not only will I raise some important and relevant questions like what I do every week, I will provide some important insights and viable solutions to meet the concerns as well. The criticism, if one were to call it, is constructive and the solutions offered are practical. I will make my observations in five parts where the first will introduce the skill boundaries vis-a-vis -vis the government and the private sector. The second part will answer an important question of who needs skills. In the third part, I will explain the relationship between employment and competency-based skills. The fourth will take you through the skill metrics and some challenges in the implementation strategies. The fifth and the final part will answer a possible future roadmap. At the end, I will urge all of you to watch a video that we created in the All India Council for Technical Education, AICTE, in 2014 to explain the National Skills Framework or NSQF in short. The skills story started gaining traction more than a decade back when it was realized that the country would have to contend with a large young population. It was recognized correctly that the demographic dividends must be exploited in favor of the growth story of the nation. At least 20 different ministries imparted skills for employment within the government of India prior to their amalgamation into a single skills ministry. For example, the textiles ministry skilled personnel in their sector and so did the petroleum ministry in their sector. However, there were no common standards to, on which the skilling was based on. A specific budget was apportioned to each ministry for the purpose. In that milieu, the much needed Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, MSDE, was set up on 9th November 2014 to coordinate all skill development efforts across the country. More than anything else, it was to consolidate and aggregate all the skill efforts. Hence, the MSDE is responsible for coordination of all skill development efforts across the country, removal of disconnect between demand and supply of skilled manpower, building the vocational and technical training framework, skill upgradation, building of new skills and innovative thinking, not only for existing jobs, but also jobs that are to be created. Much before all this happened, the National Skill Development Corporation or NSDC as we know, a not-for-profit public limited company was incorporated on July 31st, 
2008 under section 25 of the companies act 1956 this corresponds to section 8 of the companies act of 2013 the ministry of finance set it up as a public private partnership model the government of india through the ministry of msde holds 49% of the share capital of nsdc while the private sector has the balance 51% of the share capital the website of nsdc proclaims to promote skill development by catalyzing creation of large quality and for profit vocational institutions i would like to draw your attention to the marked portion as one of its aims nsdc claims to promote skill development by catalyzing creation of large quality and for profit vocational institutions a larger question should however be if a vocational institution be set up as for profit when education itself is envisaged as not for profit within the constitution that the government does subsidize the vocational training to the user by way of reimbursement to the skill training institute is another matter though two years in the past the national council of vocational education and training ncvet was notified the date being december 5th 2018 this is set up as an overarching regulator establishing regulations and standards to ensure quality in the tvet space submitting or subsuming the responsibilities of national skill development agency nsda and the erstwhile national council of vocational training ncvt thus the larger framework for skills is complete with a dedicated ministry a standard setting body and a skill development corporation in place though the interconnect and the interplay between nsdc on one side and the government on the other still seems to be evolving 60% of india's workforce is self employed many of whom remain very poor nearly 30% are casual workers only about 10% are regular employees of which two fifths are employed in the public sector more than 90% of the labor force is employed in the unorganized sector that is sectors which do not offer the social safety and other profit of employment that are available in the organized sector this is the critical area for skills and the captive market that must be explored for the skill mission with almost 6 million graduates passing every year finding appropriate employment year on year for them is a big challenge the problem is massively compounded when employment is also to be found for an age group of 20 to 35 which is five times as large year on year who lack skills and education of any consequence let's first understand the rubrics of skills in order to understand its implementation strategies skills are needed for two distinct groups firstly for those who are in college about 25 to 
and secondly the other 75 who never have seen a college or for that matter even a school or may have dropped out midway a student who completes a degree or a diploma eventually finds an employment even if termed underemployment which of course is not as bad as no employment it is however not easy for those who have no certification whatsoever to find any kind of employment friends i will leave you here the part one of my skills exposition with a question for you to think employment skills or lack of it depends on the workplace and is also the responsibility of the workplace can a state or the education system be blamed for this can they or should they take over this responsibility thank you i'll meet you again in part 2